officially saying goodbye to Los Angeles. By the time you'll be watching this video, I've already moved away from the United States. I'm feeling strange. I feel a lot more excitement than I feel sadness. And in fact, bought my dream apartment in the city I was born in, Paris. Now, why on earth would I do that? Leaving California behind after six years of living and building here with incredible friends and so much history. Well, I think everyone reaches a moment in their lives where they sense that a chapter has ended and a new one needs to begin. And that's exactly where I found myself for a while now. As a result, I think many were confused as to what happened to us, what changed, and where are we heading? And the reality is that there is a lot that's changed. And so for the first time in what feels like forever, I would like to openly speak to you about the series of events that led me here and what this means for the future of Yes Theory. And so to understand where I find myself today, I would like to begin by asking you a question. How much of your childhood do you remember? As I grow older, I find my memories of where I come from and who I used to be to feel more and more distant. Almost struggling to connect that this previous version of myself is in fact the same person I am today. As I have lived what almost feels like a fantasy life for seven years. We've been caught up in the middle of this cricket game and it's, everyone's going crazy. A life that I could never have pictured even in my wildest dreams filled with both many highs and many lows, so much developed within me. Yet, the past two years of my life became the hardest I'd ever had to go through. I slowly found myself more and more disconnected from who I was and questioned this fast-paced cycle of one experience after another. Was this really what I wanted to continue doing with my life and why? Am I feeling so lost? Well, at the start of COVID, my best friend I'd made every decision with for the prior five years decided he needed to step away from the hectic life of YouTube. Well, this is gonna be a lot harder than I thought. A few months later, my family sold our childhood home I'd lived in my entire life, during which I decided to fly back for a last chance to say goodbye. It's tough, but it's really hard to leave. Mm. In the year that followed, my only grandfather still alive passed away. And my grandmother, who I'd always shared an immensely special connection with, passed in a complete surprise at the end of what I was hoping would be my first real break in two years, leading to months of grief within my whole family. My grandmother, who grew up an orphan, abandoned at five years old, is the one who taught me to care for those who are struggling, and in the process always made me feel so safe alongside her. As the place that I came from and my memories of my childhood started to feel more and more distant, and my base back in LA felt more fragile than ever before, I felt without a home. And I think that I fell into depression for the first time in my life. Didn't want to wake up in the mornings, developed bad habits, stopped exercising, and became more and more like a shadow of myself. While I felt a mountain of pressure to maintain what we'll all sacrifice so much to build. As we internally were doing our best to create from an authentic place, our true discomfort was happening behind closed doors. On the outside, people weren't understanding why our DNA was changing. COVID had completely stopped us from being able to go on big adventures with strangers or organizing events like many of our videos had been based on in the past, which at first was devastating. But over time, it made us reevaluate ourselves and take an honest look at what we were putting out into the world. The reality was that as fun and beautiful as opening restaurants in our backyard or taking strangers skydiving had been for years, we felt that we had explored many of those ideas for years now. We're not those early 20s guys all living in a house together anymore. 
Our friendship has aged and matured, allowing each other to grow and evolve, even if it meant not showing up in the same way that millions of people wanted us to. In the years we've been running this channel, I've grown from 21 to 28. And as you can imagine, in seven years, especially in our 20s, a lot of things develop. I think in a strange way, you watched us grow up. You watched us go from being a group of highly ambitious, but at the end of the day, clueless guys taking a giant leap of faith and risk on this friendship and this philosophy we all so deeply believed in to grow into what we eventually became. In fact, I think we grew up together. There are people that recognize us on the street that tell us they started watching Yes Theory when they were teenagers, maybe even still in middle school, that have now graduated college and decided to travel the world because of these videos. And so I think it makes sense that at this point, what seek discomfort means to us has changed. As we've grown as storytellers, we've learned that we yield an important responsibility of being able to touch and influence people's perspective. And as the world we knew felt like it was crumbling around us, I think a deep internal desire to have a greater impact was awoken. So we turn our eyes to a different type of adventure and discomfort. One that at the end of the day was seeking to understand the world and ultimately trying to highlight our shared humanity as our planet seemed more and more divided. But YouTube is a platform that rewards creators for sticking to one specific format and the audience does too. As we were partially trying to survive and partially just searching for these ideas that would keep us awake at night, some comments started to appear around missing the old Yes Theory formats and ideas. And I'd be lying to you if I said that those comments didn't affect us. Um, even if we understood them to some extent, at the end of the day, we were just trying our best. In these years of experimentation, I think our channel may have seemed a little bit erratic because we weren't sure which ideas we truly wanted to do ourselves and which ideas we were pursuing simply because we had internalized our audience's expectations. So we just kept going, trying things, hoping that we'd enjoy the process while trying to understand our audience better again. And that led us to today, where we no longer live in the United States. Six years ago, when we arrived in the States, we had absolutely no plan other than to give this wild dream every living second we had. And we did. We didn't take a single day off. We didn't take any vacations. We didn't pay ourselves for years, pouring everything back into the videos. And we both loved and struggled through those years. We had no idea how long we would stay in the US. But Venice slowly became our home. The beautiful, open-minded people of this city became the characters in our stories, and we built a community who supported us. During COVID, however, that social network was shattered. Many left, and many on our team burnt out from feeling stuck and stagnant, as travel had always been a huge part of our identity. What we realized when we no longer had freedom of movement was that it was actually our travel episodes that oftentimes marked this channel the most, because I think those are often the ones that we enjoyed filming the most. Every time we would fly back to Los Angeles, I would contemplate how far away we really were from all the places that I was interested to explore and tell stories about. Simultaneously, I was having existential feelings of disconnection from my identity creating a burning desire to reconnect with parts of myself I felt that I'd left behind. And so I decided to go back to where it all started for me, Paris. Some may be surprised, some may know that I was born and raised here until I was 18 years old mostly spent in the suburbs, but I never got to know the city as an adult. And there's a quote from T.S. Eliot that I think captures this feeling for me right now. We shall not cease from exploration, and at the end of all our exploring, we shall arrive back to where it all started and know the place for the very first time. 
I've had this burning desire to better understand where I come from, speak my native languages of French and Swedish on a daily basis, and take this as an opportunity to become the author of my own story, instead of letting my circumstances float me from one place to another. I felt that we'd move to LA because that's where the opportunity took us, not where I dreamt of being. And then we stayed, not questioning that this was our new status quo. We experienced an incredible few years, but over time, as with all things in life, this chapter had to come to an end. But what does that mean for all the others? Well, I think we all felt to varying degrees like our chapter in LA had ended. Tommy, whose mom is French, moved to Paris even before I did. And Amar is enjoying the new freedom that his passport has given him to spend most of his time this year close by in Copenhagen crafting our most ambitious and biggest documentary to date. Together, we'll be traveling the world from a much more central part of the world while supporting each other to pursue both our shared dreams and our individual ones while still a part of the same family. We accepted at the start of the year that for all of us to stay motivated to continue building Yes Theory, the philosophy in whatever shape or form that might embody in the future, that we have to give each other the flexibility to create whatever brings us the most joy in the place that we feel most inspired to create from. In many ways, this is a whole new and refined chapter in our friendship. Which finally brings me to the big update. Yep, in September of last year, I began the process of buying my first apartment in Paris. One of the biggest decisions of my entire life. There was just a strange and dreamlike moment where everything in my body was telling me to go. I've only visited four apartments and the very first one I ever visited, I think it's, uh, I think it's perfect. There are a few moments in my life where I've been certain that something is gonna happen and I just feel so certain in this situation. I don't know why, I can't explain it. And so, in an extremely serendipitous series of events and six months of wrestling with the middlemen of the French bureaucracy, getting me very close to giving up on many occasions, I did it. Oh my God, my bid for an apartment in Paris just got accepted. Am I buying my first apartment right now? Oh, wow. And so, although most of this chapter is yet to be written, we're ready for what it will bring and look like. At the end of the day, I believe that in large part, an artist's journey is actually a hidden quest to get to know themselves. And that's what Yes Theory has been for all of us. As complex and confusing as we are as humans, art allows us to express our deepest emotions process the world around us, and explore aspects of our personalities we struggle to understand. And so, I think that this whole journey brought me home. One step forward into trying to understand who I am, so that I can show up more connected and self-aware in the stories that I seek to tell about the world. And so, as we seek to continue keeping our artistic and human spirit alive on this unpredictable journey, we're following that fire. Seeing where this quest will take us as we seek to express ourselves from this authentic place. We're in an open chapter in our shared book of Yes Theory and in our personal ones. Pondering what we want these next pages to look like and simply grateful many of you are still here. Interacting with each other, believing in us and keeping our dream that on some days felt dim alive. On this Yes Theory channel, we've been feeling massively inspired to go after these larger scale adventures with deeper meanings. While on our newer Seek Discomfort channel, where over 600,000 of you have already subscribed, we've been reviving the more youthful spirit our channel once had by seeing our team take on their own adventures. We hope to see you on both of these channels as we now write the future chapters of this book together. Thank you 
for being a part of this journey as we nervously and excitedly step into this next phase we are immensely grateful to have you alongside us i think that's it